This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Have you heard of it? It's a website that helps you make a website. But first... I wanted to make this video for a couple reasons. One, I personally love going to the farmer's market and I really want to encourage everyone to make it a weekly habit if you have a good market near you. Um, yeah, just look at this video as sort of like an inspiration to get out and buy an abundance of locally grown produce. And two, so many people say they stopped buying fruits and vegetables because they go bad in the fridge. Well, the best way to prevent fruits and vegetables from going bad in the fridge is to eat them before they go bad. And if you're not eating them because you're still used to convenient foods, you need to make fruits and vegetables super convenient. These food prep ideas can be done either right after you get back from the farmer's market or the next day. The whole idea is just to make your produce super handy. Um, yeah, so like make yourself a goal of finishing all the stuff that you buy because the more fruits and veggies you eat, the less room in your belly you have for the cussy stuff you know is not that great for you. First, juice. I don't have time to juice every day and I can almost guarantee neither do you. Not even close. So I'm trying out this idea. In this juice, I put in carrots and their tops, one whole head of celery, kale, parsley, apples, lemon, and ginger. And then I made two servings. One I drank right away, and one I poured into this old juice bottle and froze. Be sure to leave plenty of room for the juice to expand when you do this, because freezing always makes things expand. Freezing the juice preserves the nutrients much better than just refrigerating them. And frozen then thawed juice tomorrow is better than no juice at all, right? Don't you think? Also, we use a lot of cilantro in our house. My dad and I put it in our heavy metal detox smoothies every day, and we also love to throw it in salads, and we use it to top our meals a lot at night too. So we buy tons of cilantro at the market every week. So I washed it and I stored it for quick, easy access throughout the week. I used this basic salad spinner that my mom has and I stored it in this bin. And here is a really handy tip you have to try. Include a cold, wet paper towel or two in whatever container you're storing your greens or herbs in. It keeps them nice and fresh. And by the way, this was only half the cilantro we bought. I have, um, I still have a lot to get through this week. <laughs> I also like to use kale throughout the week, either in salads or smoothies or cooked. Um, most of the time, I don't want the stem, so I took a few minutes just to destem a bunch of kale and put it right back in the bag it was kept in. Um, this is because kale is one of the best foods you can eat. I know it's it's still kind of trendy out there, but it's trendy for a reason because it's super, super healthy. This kale didn't have a lot of soil on it like the cilantro did, so I didn't feel the need to wash it. Um, and this might sound kind of scandalous to you, but if you get your fruits and vegetables from a trusted organic farmer or you grow them yourself, there's not always a need to wash them and scrub them super clean. In fact, there's um, something I just learned about. It's, there's a special film um, of elevated biotics on trusted organic vegetables, the kind without the waxy stuff on them, that actually helps us produce more B12, something almost everyone watching this video is probably deficient in. This is something I learned from Anthony William, and I will link the article where he talks about this in depth below in that box down there. Check it out. Oh, and I just want to show you something my mom and I did the other day. We peeled and cut these carrots so they're all ready to throw on a baking sheet to roast. And yeah, it just makes it so incredibly fast at dinner time. Next thing I wanted to make today was some healing broth. This is another thing I learned from Anthony William, and I've talked about it in a couple videos of mine on my channel. I love drinking broth, not just when I'm sick, but really at any time because it's so soothing and I know it's helping me fight off pathogens and just making me feel so healthy. This one has celery, two onions, a whole head of garlic, some carrots, some kale, a bunch of parsley, two tomatoes, some ginger, some dulse flakes, and eight to 10 cups of water. Just boil all this and then let it simmer for an hour. Um, you can play around with your favorite veggie broth combinations, but it, you really do want to get those mineral rich ones in, um, especially the celery, the onion, the garlic, things like that. I also really love adding turmeric um, and shiitake mushrooms in mind, I just didn't have it on hand. When everything's all cooked for an hour, just ladle out, ladle out some broth for you to sip on and then drain and store the rest to enjoy the next day. The last little prep I wanted to show you is simply juicing citrus ahead of time. 
I love to have orange juice on hand that I squeeze myself um, because bottled juices simply do not have the nutrients that hand squeezed juices do. If I'm gonna have a bunch of orange juice as a meal for breakfast or something, I really do prefer to have it fresh made that day um, like and then drink it immediately after. I just find it digests so much more, so much better that way. But I also like to have some OJ in the fridge to use in smoothies throughout the week. It just makes things so much more complicated if you have to juice oranges at the same time that you're also making a smoothie. It takes more time, it's another appliance you have to clean up. If you make it ahead of time, it'll be worth it to buy a big bag of oranges from the farmer's market. Because I don't know about you, but a large bag of oranges for me at my market cost $12. And that gets me almost two gallons of orange juice. If you got fresh squeezed orange juice from the store, especially if it's organic, it would cost you way more per glass. This just makes so much sense financially. Once again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Something I love about Squarespace is it's all about making your next move for your next creative project. To be really honest guys, you don't exist if you don't have a website. <laughs> if you really want to have some sort of creative project or a restaurant or music or something that you want to promote and put yourself out there, you need a beautiful space online to showcase that. They have award-winning customer service and I'm not quite sure how you win awards with customer service. I've never seen one of those award shows but I completely believe it. If you want to try out Squarespace for totally for free, for totally for no money at all, go to squarespace.com slash Hannah McNeely and you can get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. That's all. Bye-bye.